Leona. Leona means lion. Leona means lion in Spanish, but her name was actually Ariella, which is lion in Hebrew. Okay, this is a really interesting movie, a movie you can learn from, a movie you can, you can think of as uh, an expression of Romeo and Juliet. And uh, George and I both impressed with this movie. So, uh, I, George, I'm giving you five minutes because I know what happens to discuss how the track of this movie. What's the environment and what happens? Okay. Well, the movie opens with this young woman who's getting married, ritual cleansing herself. It's known as a mikvah in the, in the Jewish culture, right? And among her, you know, the ladies, you know, young women around her, there's this Ariella, right? who's sort of blondish and, and they show her, her. And, uh, and then there's this, this woman's marriage and you know they go through the marriage ceremony of the friend. And then they show Ariella, who is a mural artist. She's, she goes into these other neighborhoods, not the neighborhood she grew up in. And she, she paints these murals you know, on, um, on the walls, right? And this young man comes up and starts talking to her and they start the conversation up the two of them and i think you've got you've got to back up a little bit and say all of this happens in mexico city yes yes, yes. you have to mention that it's really important yeah. I, I was going to get into that later but yeah it happens in mexico city and the whole basis is that ariella is from a Jewish family that originally was from Syria. There's a whole Syrian Jewish Mizrahi um, group. George, it's really important to um, tell people where this takes place. Um, Mexico City, you, you haven't mentioned that, and we really need to know that because this is all sort of geographic, okay? Yes, this is in Mexico City. It's uh, the, the, the Ariella's family is originally from Syria. They're Syrian Jews, Mizrahi Jews, right? And they're part of a little enclave of, Jew, of a Jewish of, of community in Mexico City. And, and, and she is dealing with her Mizrahi Mexican Jewish family. And so, so the storyline, I, I think I mentioned that she, she was painting a mural um, on a wall in the in not her neighborhood, but in a poor neighborhood in Mexico City and, and in a different in, in, a, in a bohemian art art neighborhood. And this young Mexican guy comes up and starts talking to her about her painting, right? Because he's from a very artistic family. His family are all into the arts, into theater, into art, and whatever. So they start up a conversation and he sort of pursues her. I guess he's smitten by her. And little by little, they start a relationship, right? And the relationship gets stronger and stronger. And they fall in love and they have sex, you know, they, they, they you know, do the, do, the, do the thing, right? And, and, and uh, as, it, as it progresses, she meets his family and she gets to know his father, who's a literary critic and an, a, a he does plays and stuff like that. And, 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 but she never introduces him to her family because in the interim, her mother, who's a real good, uh, I shouldn't use the, the, the Jewish term, uh, yet, but she, the, she, she, gets, she finds out, right, that something's going on. The mother really knows something's going on and she starts prying her daughter and her daughter, pretty much eventually when the mother's crying, breaks down it, that she's in love with this guy, Ivan. And, and the mother says, oh, thank God his name is Jesus. So, so, but then the mother and her father, who's they're not, the parents are no longer together. And the, all the family and friends try to make sure that they convince Ariella to break up with this guy and to start dating some Jewish guys in that community, right? And um, I want to go to the point about the, the family. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we get a snapshot of the family where they all come together on Sabbath evening. Exactly. Um, and they make the prayers. 
in a splendid house, in a beautiful house. Yes. And and the uh, uh, Ariel's grandmother likewise lives in a splendid house. Yeah. These people are wealthy. And so you you have to sort of take a track on who, who are these people? Well, uh, in the 50s, they came from Syria. They stuck together as a family. They had they didn't have a, a farthing, not a peso uh, when they came. And they got into some kind of retail business and they, they stayed together is the point. They intermarried, uh, you know, Jewish people. They stayed together, and they were they were fruitful, uh, and they th they were thriving through the period from the fifties to, you know, till now essentially. Um, and so you 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 begin to wonder how did they do that? They, they came from Syria, which is an odd place, really, uh, to Mexico, which is another an odd place to 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 wind up in. Um, and they got rich. Um, and then you have, and this is really part of the story, you have a divorce. Um, the, uh, she was with her mother, but she saw her father, and it was like a friendly divorce. Um, and um, I, I believe this is part of it. I think what the, what the filmmaker is saying is that this family stuck together even though there was a divorce. The, the culture, you know, the ethic of this family was so strong that the divorce did not separate them, that the, uh, the family was still together following, you know, the culture, following the mikveh you spoke of, um, inter interrelating with a number of other Jewish families, making money, uh, having Shabbos dinner, um, all, all of this despite the divorce. They were tight. Um, and the multi-generations of the family were tight, and the siblings were tight. So whatever had happened to them before this, the time of this movie um, did not get in the way of how close that family was. Um, and furthermore, they were in Mexico, where there were not a lot of Jews around, where everybody around was Catholic or Christian. And um, so... Um, this made them all the tighter. There were no options outside, no social options outside the family. They had been together, doing their thing together for, what, uh, 50, 50 years. Um, and so you have, to, you have to see the family in that context. <clears throat> she was the daughter of the family. They had expectations of her. And now she was going to have to break with them. This was, it would have been tragic in New York or LA, but it was much more tragic in Mexico City um, for all of those familial reasons that I just identified. And she was an only child too. She was the only child of the mother and the father, which probably made this even more emphasized for the parents that she was the only child. Yeah. So, okay, so it's it's tragic. It's a tragic story. It is Romeo and Juliet, although I'm, I don't I didn't get the same emotional reaction in my own self um, with their romance. Uh, it was a little sketchy. This is a movie that won awards yes. um, for being understated. It was an understated romance. It wasn't you know that powerful thundering Shakespearean you know romance. It wasn't. Um, it was it was subtle. She was subtle. Yes. Ivan was subtle. Um, the relationship with his family was subtle. He, he got an apartment. Remember that part? He got an apartment. He wanted her to spend time with him in the apartment. He was, he was ready to marry her. Yes, exactly. Um, but she was resistant because, um, as you say, her mother spotted her uh, interest in another man, and she wanted to know everything. And when she found out that the other man was Mexican and not Jewish, she went nuts. And and then um, and then they began the juggernaut. The juggernaut. <laughs> I mean, that was very interesting how they all came together, all all within the Jewish community, and they brought all these weapons down on her. Exactly. <laughs> and and the question was whether she was going to tell them all to get stuck and you know, go off with Ivan, or whether she was going to succumb to all the pressures. Exactly. So, Let's look at the pressures. What kind of pressure? You, you alluded to some of the pressures, but I think it's important 
to see what kind of things they did to this poor girl who was 25 years old, who was an idealist, uh, painted walls, you know, for free, for free, just to help people. She painted walls. She was an artiste. Um, she was uh, not all that pretty. Uh, sort of a plain pretty is what she was. And, um, uh, you know, you, so you, you, you relate to her, but you don't get all that excited about her. You get excited about her situation and the tragedy of the situation. And now she's so vulnerable. She's been raised in the faith, okay? And they bring the juggernaut down on her. And it's, it's almost a Zola-esque. So here's a, a human experiment. Now let's bring the juggernaut into the room. What happens? Exactly. <laughs> so she, she's a free spirit, Ariella, you know? And then yeah. they, it's not only her father and her mother, but her, a lot of her friends trying to match make her, match make her up with some Jewish guys, right? And then, and then they get this, as you said, this professional guy who, whose whole career is to get to make sure <laughs> Jews don't marry shit out of their faith, right? And then they get the <laughs> rabbi to talk to her, and then her grandmother, who she is close with, talks to her and talks to her about years of culture and you know 50 years they've been and, you know a lot of this is a persecutor you know, when you have a millennium for millennia of persecution the way jews have been persecuted for centuries you sort of become like a circle the wagons kind of mentality well, no there's a reason in the culture you know you if you want to preserve the culture you have to stay together you have to marry in the faith and exactly. this has been hammered in for thousands of years so if you want to leave the faith, we disown you. We yeah. put all this pressure on you. We never talk to you again. We say the prayer for the dead for you. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, it's a tremendous it's pressure. And, and the result is that most people, most kids, yeah. come to the pressure. Now, that is, you had some stats on this, I think, are very interesting. In yeah. the U.S., we, we that is, uh, the kids, um, are somewhat emancipated. And Exactly. We can tell our parents, look, sorry, but no, no dice. I'm not playing that game. I'm, I'm often doing whatever I want and don't get in my way. Um, the, exactly. Even there, there's not, not everybody. Some of them do succumb. In Mexico City, and that's why I, I stress Mexico City, it's different. There's no way you can run to. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. See, the thing is, like, our neighbors across the street, when I was growing up, there was only two houses, us and the neighbor across the street. The oldest daughter married a Jewish guy. The second child, you know, the proverbial, she married this Irish guy, not non-Jewish. And then the third one married a Jewish guy. So, and I'm sure that they were uh, conservative. So there was a lot of pressure uh, on those girls to, you know, and then the oldest one married a guy, an attorney, but with the same last name as us, which is it's a really, I thought was uncanny of all the Jewish guys that she should have married someone with the same last name as the as the non jew well, you know, um, There are a thousand stories. I mean, it, it starts with Shakespeare. But what was interesting about this movie, yeah. and I'm talking subjectively here, is that although um, you knew at the outset what the result was going to be, because the structure around her was so strong and determined and baked in, you knew that she would never be able to prevail against them. She wasn't that strong, the problem, okay? And, and you, you wound up like getting in her head. What is she going to do? What is this poor girl going to do? Is she going to, you're going to find the strength or not? Uh, is she going to be able to you know, bond up to his family? Uh, his, his family going to tolerate her family? So, you know, it's more than the stories that you and I had when we were kids. It's more than... You know, what, what we've seen in other art, um, you know, Broadway, movies, for our whole lives, George, we've seen this play out from Shakespeare on forward with the Capulets and the Montagues and the parents didn't like each other. What happens now? And so you, you wind up getting in this poor, she's somewhat shy, right? Very in, introspective, quiet, thoughtful girl, I'm 25 or so being faced with this horrible dilemma. You know, do I have to listen to all the people putting pressure on me or can I go with my heart, even though my heart, you know, violates what they're telling me. Um, and, you know, you get to 
you get to be with her. You get to be in her head. And that's what makes this art special. This movie goes beyond, you know, anything I've seen on this, on this very common, right? This common scenario, this, this exactly. common literary thread. We, we are really living in her head, the whole movie. Where is she going to go now? And can she, can she find the strength? And also, I mean, it's, it's Mexico. It's Mexico City. She goes into neighborhoods that are not particularly safe. Yeah. She, she's not um, well-dressed. She's not doing anything fancy. She's just an ordinary, ordinary person. But she comes from a Jewish family, and she's dating a, a Mexican guy who is a good guy. And um, his family is, um, is, is to be admired. Uh, so I, I don't know why, but I, I, I seriously related to her and, you know, in the problem that she had and the variation on the ordinary theme. Uh, is she going to break away or not? And at the end of the day, uh, it actually, I, was gonna, I said before that you knew going in what would happen at the end. Um, but I don't know why I say this. Um, you didn't know exactly how it would happen at the end. You didn't know what the pressures would be and how she would actually react to those pressures and how he would react to those pressures. Can you talk about what happened to him? Because he saw that she, she couldn't introduce him to her family. It was impossible. And so she kept on putting him off about that. And ultimately, he realized that it was not going to happen. So what did he do? Well, I, he left and found some Mexican woman to get engaged to. And then he, she, she contacts him on a cell phone, and he invites her to a party for his brother or his cousin who was getting engaged. And at the party, he tells Ariella that he's also engaged to this Mexican, uh, other Mexican women. And I think that was pretty devastating to her because she still loved this guy, right? And, and, he, and he loved her. And they were, they still loved each other, and yet they moved on because he saw that it was impossible that she just couldn't get to the point where she would, you know, introduce him to her family. She yeah. wasn't strong enough. And I think the director Isaac Isaac Cherem, he really handled this beautifully. I mean, the whole storyline, the way he did this, um, showed he really understood this whole scenario, and it was. Very, very well done. Um, so at the end, um, where, where are we getting now? Um, yeah. um, well, let me, let's, let's, let's hold that for a minute. The, the end is very powerful. The scene where she meets uh, uh, Ivan's um, uh, fiance, yeah. um, she's very Mexican. Yeah. She's yeah. very pretty. Yeah. She's way prettier than Ariella is. Yeah. So you, you, you have to think, well, what, you know, Ariella has talents and skills and a poetry about her that the Mexican girl does not have, but the Mexican girl is very pretty, and and Ivan's going to do that, and it's it's the end for Ariella. She has to, and and, and you, you know you'd think you would see some heavy acting at that scene, but no, it's very subtle. You ever see her screw up her face or, you know, or cry or anything? You you just you get a close up. There, there were a lot of close ups in this movie. You got to watch her react, but the reaction was not all that, you know, it was not overacting at all. It was underacting, and you had to figure it out. I like movies that are like that. Uh, you had to figure out what she was thinking, and and what the other people were thinking. So you you got the kind of the script, but you didn't get the emotive power. You had to you had to look for that, and and you a lot of. Uh, close-ups, which I like. And that means they were good actors and there was a good director there. But let me um, let me ask you about the final scene, because the final scene, when she finally, you know, realizes that there's no future in this, that she has lost her lover. Um, she has lost the thing that, uh, the one thing that made, that made a difference for her in her young life. Uh, so what happens? Well, she had already cut her hair for some reason, and she goes home, and she fills the bathtub with water, 
and she takes all her clothes off. She's naked and she gets into the bathtub, right? And then she goes under the water. Now, I still don't understand that last scene completely. It's, it sort of leaves me questioning because she stays under the water for a long period of time. Time, you know, it's not just a quick get into the water like it would be in a mikvah, right? She stays under, and then finally, I guess she comes up for air, you know, after a long period of time, and that's how the movie ends. So you don't know at the end was she thinking of ending her life, or was she thinking of cleansing herself in this bathtub, like you know, similar to the mikvah at the beginning. They sort of have the the, the movie starts off with a mikvah and ends up with her naked in, in, in this bathtub. While her friend was naked in the mikvah in this big pool, she's in their bathtub naked underwater. So that sort of question, it leaves you hanging. And I think a lot of some of the reviews I read said they also felt that this was sort of um, left you hanging. It leaves you hanging. It really- well, let's, look, let's look at the uh, op options. Uh, and I'll take a minute to do that. Sure. Okay, one, of course, is you you really are inevitably led to the possibility that she's uh, committing suicide. Exactly. Um, she's under the water for a long time. Um, I, I'm not sure that you can do that very easily. You can't commit suicide in a bathtub. It's hard to do that all by yourself. Um, and, and after a while, you realize that she's not expelling air. She's sort of holding her breath. So it's not really suicide, but you, you're led to think it might be. The second, as you mentioned, it's like the mikvah, she is cleansing herself and, and maybe rededicating herself to the Jewish culture. Yeah, She's yeah. saying, well, I'm, I'm making my own mikvah. I am, I'm, I'm cleansing myself from the trouble I had. I am now going to be a nice Jewish daughter and follow the rules. And this is now the next part of my life, you know, um, washed. You know? That's that's a possibility. Another possibility, and I'm throwing these things at you, see if you agree with any of them. Um, another possibility is uh, I'm really ticked off about this. Um, I am I am not going to buy into what they're selling me anymore. Um, I am. This is the demarcation in my life. Uh, I lost uh, the one I loved. And they're never going to set me up with another geeky guy again. I'm, I will refuse that. And I will find, um, you know, I will find a future in my life that suits me. And I am, you know, doubling down on that. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm taking this bath. By the way, the, the camera is above her. It's, a, it's not a shot from the side. Exactly. The it's above her and, you know, you, you're stunned with the camera angle. She's quite naked. You've never seen her quite naked before. I mean, right down to the pubic. And um, she, she looks better than you thought, actually. Um, and, uh, you know, part of it, I think, is she's, she's found herself, right? She's found herself, and the hell with this noise. I am not going to buy into this anymore. I have, I have determined something. I have determined um, that I am stronger than they thought. And they're never going to do. They're never going to do this to me again. In my next chapter, I'm going to do it my way. That's another possibility. What do you think? Number three, and you know why? Because she was painting a mural, and she signed it, Leona, which is in Spanish. That's her name, Ariella, the equivalent in Spanish. So that what she's saying is pretty much is that I'm eschewing my Jewish family, right? And I am now becoming Leona. I'm separate. I'm my own person. So that I think your scenario number three, because of the way she signed that mural, you know, that that's my take on this. And uh, matter of fact, I find I found her sort of attractive. I didn't find the, his Mexican um, um, fiance as attractive as her. So I guess <laughs> what makes the world go round, you know? So, so uh, you know, so, so it's scenario three. This was a, this was an excellent, excellent, the way this whole thing was handled and you, the subtle, the subtlety you're saying, she never really expresses herself outwardly. It's, she's holding a lot of this in 
And even when the grandmother's talking to her, when the rabbi's talking to her, when the professional you know, guy who makes sure that Jewish children, young people marry Jews, she never, she doesn't, ex she, she, there's no expression on her face. Yeah, so, and she doesn't argue. She doesn't you argue. Know, she she's, she's quiet. She's reserved. Yeah. She, she okay. listens to them very dutifully. She does her, you know, dutiful daughter thing. Exactly. But she never says, you're all wrong. And uh, I'm, I'm, you know, and what you said is wrong, and this is wrong, and that's wrong. No, no, just listen, which is which is so interesting because that's what would happen. Yes, she is torn. She's you can tell she's torn. She's she was very close to her mother before this thing, and and you can see in the early parts of the show they show how close she was with her mother, right? And and uh, this sort of created a. a separation with her mother a rift so she's torn you know it's it's, it's but you know even even number three the thing about i'm going to do it my way now yeah. um there's there's tragedy in that yeah. you know this was first love yeah. um this was romeo and juliet and it, it's not all that obvious but after a while you put the pieces together and you realize exactly. that's what it was for both of them and so now that's been just just destroyed. And whatever chapter follows for her, it's missing him. She'll never have what she had before. Um, she, she, she'll try to fill the void, and she never will, but she's determined to move on anyway. But Jay, know. we don't know where, what chapter two is. You know, no, we don't. We can I only mean, imagine. Anything could happen. He anything. Could, he could not marry this one other woman. She could break down and finally <laughs> get him back you know because she's the one who contacted him by cell phone to co communicate with him after going out with all these as you said nerdy jewish guys right <laughs> why did they have to find nerdy jewish guys? but so there has to be a sequel george exactly right. Let's, we, we need a sequel to find out what she did <laughs> yeah you don't know where she's gonna go you don't know where they, they, this is why they, they just like that other movie with the the, the, the guy that he became from, from the Bowery boys, and then he became famous. He became a, a government official. And then at the end, he was in the garbage truck. Remember, what was that? Remember that movie? Yeah, Once Upon a Time in America. Exactly. So they yeah. leave you hanging, right? And in this thing, so, I mean, I'm not sure that because, you know, maybe she finally gets her, her the strength to, to tell her family, you know, screw, screw off, you know, that she's going she's gonna to do this. Because, and for me, it all has to do with that Leona, the signature, signifies that she's really rich. Her identity is breaking away from who she was. Whenever people change their name, that, that's really pretty profound. And this was pr pretty profound. So, so we yes. have to see what the, see, as you said, what's the sequel? Where do we go? Where does she go? Where does this story finally end? You know, because if she breaks down and, it introduces him to her family, that relationship could get back together because that was the crux of the problem is that yeah. he felt insulted uh, that she wasn't introducing. Well, and they weren't going to tolerate it though. Not, not one of them was going to tolerate it. They were going to disown her or something. You know, but, but, but you know, take it one step further. We don't have that much time left, but one step further. Isn't this kind of chapter to chapter thing where you finally decide that you are in charge I mean, in our analysis here today. Um, isn't that really everybody? You know, Leave it to Beaver does not really exist, that there is always a stress point with your parents. They tell you what to do, and at one point or another, you say, well, thank you, but I'm on my way. And isn't that part of this movie? So true. I mean, my parents meddled in every aspect of my life. <laughs> they had left me alone. I would have done what the hell I wanted, you know, um, with career, with everything. But it was from top down, very, very overbearing, you know. And my brother, second child, he, he didn't. Uh, but that, you know, that's always the case in immigrant families yeah. and minority families. I'd say always, but a lot of the time. And the question is whether my my hypothesis here works for everybody, including you know, leave it to Beaver families who, um, you know, have what what appears 
from the outside to be a, a very, you know, lovely familial relationship. I think there's always tension. It's the way the human family works. There's always the weaning. It's the weaning. And that's what we saw in the bathtub. Okay, let's rate it. What do you think? I really like this movie. Let's put it that way. I liked what Isaac Cherem did. I mean, I, the subtlety, as you were saying. I'm going to give it a 10, not a 10 plus, but a 10. I felt that it was very well directed. Everything, as you said, subtle. The points that were being made, the, the emphasis on, on her um, sense of her, her feelings and stuff, which were, as you said, very subtle. I like this movie. I'll give it a 10. What, what do you think? What, what, well, I, didn't, I hadn't heard a thing about the 10 plus yet. This was a first uh, that you mentioned, 10 plus. I didn't, I didn't know that was on our scale, George. Okay. Uh, but since you mentioned it, I'm going to give it a 10 plus. Okay. I want, I want to do you and better. Because I, 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 what I liked was there was a certain amateur quality about the movie. Yeah. There was a certain amateur quality of, about her. Um, she never was fancy. She was never exuberant. Yeah. She was sometimes, but mostly she was just an ordinary girl trying to get through it in an environment which didn't make it easy. Yeah. And um, and I, I really enjoyed the characters. I think I know those people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, unbelievably, so do I. I I'm very uh, so. I mean, they, they were they they rang true. Everybody in the movie rang true. Nobody just, I, I'm very critical when I watch these movies at home, you know, uh, they all rang true and it, it, um, it, it got me close to them. I felt close to all of them, including the family that was, was leaning on her. And so I give it a 10 plus. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank movie. you, George. We have so, we have miles to go and all these great movies that are coming out and they're not just all vengeance and violence there. Movies you can learn from, George. Thank uh, God for that. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm sick of all the violence in the world and in <laughs> movies. Let's yeah. get back to things that are, we can learn from not and not how to shoot somebody or knife somebody. <laughs> so true. Thank you, George. I always look forward to our conversations. I'll see you next time. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.